back to my channel. So for this week's project that I'm gonna share with you has consumed my life. So this project is revamping a Pottery Barn Mitchell Gold sofa and love seat. Now I just wanted to give you a little bit of backstory before we get into the project. I'll put a timestamp here if you wanna just go to the project part. I have been wanting this style of couch for quite some time, but I didn't wanna spend a ton of money on couches. I am frugal to the core and I didn't want to just spend a ton of money on something just for the aesthetic of it. So like with everything that I do, I went ahead and checked Craigslist and let go. And lo and behold, I saw this couch and love seat on let go, but the person wanted $300 for them and that was over my price range. So I saved it and I had just been watching it for two months hoping that they would drop the price. When I finally got a little bit of money saved up, I went ahead and asked them if they would take 200 for it. Now, after I sent that message, I was terrified that I offended them and they were just gonna ignore me or just say, no, you can't have it. But at this point, I just wanted those couches so bad. By the way, the couches did not come with slip covers and I realized that Pottery Barn slip covers are expensive, but I had a solution for that as well. Anyway, this sweet lady messaged me back and she's like, I will take $150 if you will just take them from my garage. And I was like, Yes. So when we got them home, I realized that the cushions themselves weren't in the best shape. So I decided that I was going to refresh them. Now I could just add polyfill to the top cushions because they were just pillows, but the bottom ones, I didn't know how I was going to revamp those. And then I remembered a month or two ago, I got actual Pottery Barn cushions, like down covered cushions from someone off of Let Go for free. This was the perfect project. I was gonna put brand new cushions on this tired Pottery Barn sofa and revamp it. So without further ado, cause I just blabbed on forever, let's get into the project. So this is what the couches looked like before. They weren't in bad shape and the frame was in perfect condition, but the back cushions and the seat cushions were just looking a little sad. These are the brand new Pottery Barn cushions from a different sectional that I got for free off of Let Go. They're just regular foam inside with a down filled cover. So these cushions were too big for my current couch that I was using, so I went ahead and went through the process of cutting the foam down. I just used a plain bread knife and I gently went over the foam, not pushing too hard, just to score it. And I just repeated this till it was all the way through. Now for the actual cushion cover, I needed to dissect that so I could fit it to the new size of the cushion. So the down was actually in between the layers here. So as I took apart the cushion cover, I had to pin it down just so the feathers didn't go absolutely everywhere. So I have separated all of the layers of the cushion cover and as you saw I pinned off the edges of the big piece and I pinned the front of the band that goes all the way around it 
um, and I ended up just sewing that. This isn't necessary per se, but it keeps the feathers from going all over the place while I'm pinning, so I just prefer to do that. And on the big pieces, the big square pieces, here I only sewed on two sides. So then I went ahead and I started fitting the outer band to the new size of the cushion. And to do this, I just pinned it down onto the cushion just to hold it there and matched up the seams on each of the four corners. Now on the front side of the band, it's actually down filled as well. So I had to trim that off and then I pulled out a little bit of the feathers just to make it easier to pin. After you finish pinning, you pull out the pins that are holding it down in place and then you pull it off and sew it along the lines of the pins that you made. After you finish sewing, put it back on and trim off the excess fabric. Then I went ahead and I attached the top piece back to the band and I lined up the two edges that I had sewn closed with the edge of the band. Here you can tell it's way too big so I emptied out the excess feathers and went ahead and started pinning it. And then I repeated the process on the other side. I just made sure everything was taut before I pinned it down. Once I finished sewing, I put it back on and trimmed off the excess fabric. Now the only thing that I did different on the bottom panel than the top panel is I needed to be able to take the foam out and it, it just wasn't possible with it pinned down. So what I ended up doing is I pinned down the sides that had excess fabric and then I unpinned the sides that were lined up. Once the foam was out, I went ahead and I just lined them back up and pinned it again. I flipped it right side out I went ahead and stuffed the cushion back in there I didn't film this because it's a full body experience to try to get the cushion back into there so 
So as I mentioned in the intro, this couch did not come with slipcovers. And before I even purchased this couch, I did some research and I found that IKEA Ektor slipcovers would work. And plus they're cheap. It was $19 for the love seat and $29 for the sofa slipcover. Not a perfect fit, but close enough, especially on the sofa. The love seat needs a little bit more work than the sofa, but I'm not fitting the slipcover to the couch in this video. So next I tackled filling in the back cushion. And then I had this brilliant idea to use the excess feathers that I had taken from each of the cushions that I had redone and kind of do a thin layer of feathers all around the inside. And this is what it looks like all finished. In an effort to be completely honest with you guys, this project went as smooth as it could go. I didn't have too many issues with the actual construction of the project and figuring out what I needed to do, but there were things that went wrong, chiefly just the mess. This project took like four days to fully complete fixing all of the cushions because there were a lot of cushions and back cushions to do. So I, in between the days, didn't feel like I needed to clean because I was just gonna get it messy again the next day. Thus leading to what I will unaffectionately call the feather apocalypse. so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, liked my little musical tidbit there. I worked hard on that. I'm quite proud of it and that's what was going through my head as I was making this and dealing with all of the mess. It was um yeah it was special. And for any of you wondering if my husband still loves me after that I did check for you and here you go. So after all of this and all the feathers and all the mess do you still love me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good, I'm glad. I just wanted the people to know. That I love you, even though you're crazy. Yeah. yeah. He's the sweetest for putting up with me, let me tell you. But as far as the actual slipcovers that I got from Ikea, they are not fitted right now. And I'm gonna just take a week and I'm gonna just um, sip on some wine and chill out a little bit and um, regroup to actually do that part. But they're covered right now and it just feels amazing to have couches that are like they just feel premium because they're down filled now it's just so cushy to sit on it and i've taken a nap on it they're, they're it's, it's amazing love it but i don't know if i'm gonna make a video about me tailoring the slip covers to my pottery barn sofa doesn't seem like the most interesting video if you guys would like to see that video let me know and i will film me doing it but it won't be next week's video because i need a break <laughs> but anyway i hope you guys all have amazing weeks and i will see you guys next saturday for another diy video bye guys I just want to